Okay, flat mirrors aren't terribly useful, but spherical mirrors can be quite useful for scientific purposes. They allow you to magnify things and look at things that are much smaller. They also allow you to collect a lot of light. Spherical mirrors are, are called spherical because they're cut out of a spherical reflecting surface. Or you can think of them anyway, as if you took this big ball that was reflective and you just sliced off a portion of it. And then what you would have left, this portion, would be a spherical mirror. So a spherical mirror then is a part of a sphere. It's just one small part of a sphere. So it's as if you're slicing off a part of the sphere. Now, if the inner surface of the, uh, the sphere is reflecting, then we call it a concave mirror. It's like it caves in, I like to think of it. All right, so that would be a mirror that looks like this, where the person, you would look into it from this side, All right? Uh, we see these types of mirrors and shaving mirrors. You don't see them that often, actually. Dentists use this because these are often used for magnifying things. So the the mirror that you the makeup mirror that allows your face to look really big, that's a a, a concave mirror that caves in. So this is a concave mirror. The reflecting surface is on this side. And this is the back of the mirror. So as I said, this is where you stand, right here. Now, a, um, if the outer surface of the sphere is, if the outer surface of the sphere is the reflecting surface, it is a convex mirror. And a convex mirror will look like this. The reflecting surface will be here. So this is a reflecting surface. And then this would be the back of the mirror. So in a convex mirror, you would stand on this side of the mirror, and then you would see your image over on this side. Your image would actually be smaller. These are like security mirrors in a, uh, in like, you know, Walgreens or whatever. Now, for both type of mirrors, we're going to describe their physical dimensions by the center of curvature. And the center of curvature is just the radius of the sphere, right? So the center of curvature for this sphere would be right here. The center of curvature is just the radius of the sphere, and we're going to call it C. And then we're also going to describe the focal point, which is just one half of the center of curvature. So the focal point is right there. Now further, we can define the focal point as the place where parallel rays converge. So if I have rays that come in and they're parallel to one another, then they are going to converge at the focal point. So the focal point is defined in two ways. It is one half of the center of curvature or one half of the radius of the sphere from which you've taken this spherical reflecting surface, the spherical mirror, or you can also define it as the place where parallel rays converge. Often it's a lot easier just to measure where the rays converge. Um, now, you can have parallel rays if they come from a source that's very far away. So rays are parallel when they originate from some source at a very large distance or from some source very far away. Right. That would mean that the, the object, uh, well, P, we'll call it P, the object distance would be infinity. And we'll see how that works out for, uh, for mirrors. And you think about this, make this a little bit bigger. Think about this, you know, yeah, let's say they have a point source of light, and it's putting out light in all directions. These are the light rays that are emitting off of this, you know, light bulb or whatever. All right. Now, if you're standing very close to it, then these light rays are diverging from one another. But if I go really, really far away, the light rays will appear 
as if they're right next to one another. Because when you're really, really far away from this source of light, you're really seeing light rays that are very close to one another. So when they get to you, they look parallel to you. Right? So if you're a very large distance from an object, that the light rays from that object are parallel. Right? For example, the sun. If you're very far away from the sun, as we are, 93 million miles or whatever, uh, it appears that the light rays are parallel. You don't have to be that far away, though. It depends on your mirror, but if your mirror's focal length is just a few centimeters, then you really only need to be a few meters away, you know, 10, 20 times the focal length for the rays to appear that they're parallel from one another. Let's pause there, and we'll pick back up with the mirror equation.